What's happening, Andy? Here I am joined today by my good friend Anthony Ski of Key Point Intelligence. What's happening? How are you, Anthony? Hey, Andy. How are you, man? All good here. Hope everything's well with you, man. I'm fantastic. We're having a little relapse here in Rochester. We've got some snow again. I thought we were done with this, but never. It's still March, so you know we've got some time left. You're uh, look like you're at the office. You're in New Jersey. Yep, in New Jersey. Just got back actually from Japan. Visited a whole bunch of customers there. So it was a really good trip to go over there and touch base with the manufacturers and see what's going on. Oh, overseas. I can't wait to dig into that. Um, before we do that, you know, for the couple of people who may not be familiar with you, I know everybody knows BLI with you know BLIQ and the the online comparisons that we've used uh, for for a million years. Uh, tell us a little more about you know Keypoint and the and Keypoint Intelligence and the the full overview of what you guys do. Yeah, so the key point I, everybody knows us for BLIQ and testing, right? That's how I grew up, right? I was yep, a copier sales guy in New York. That's how I got my start, and I used those products, right? And the testing was an important element. But a lot of people don't know we have five divisions besides those two. We have an advisory division which gives yearly accounts of AI, labels and packaging, production, office, the latest trends, tracking what's going to happen in five years from now, projections. So that's a cool element to have. Consulting is another business that we have that nobody knows. And a lot of people use us for voice of customer, um, vertical market information, comparisons, how am I doing? business is a growing business for us. And then we have our platform business, which we call e-commerce and uh, a quoting tool. And it's funny, the quoting tool came out of, we do dealer councils, Andy, not a lot of people know that. And we have two forms of them. We have a mega dealer council with six of the 18 mega dealers. And then we have an SMB with nine of the top dealers on it. And we rotate it through but a lot of what we work on comes from the dealer network and the manufacturers. And so one of the biggest dealers said, we need a good quoting tool. Our reps are sitting here on enterprise deals, gathering information, right? Leasing, what equipment, where is it? All of that could take three hours to get a proposal out. We work collaboratively with the mega dealer we came up with a quoting tool and we got that exercise of three hours down to 20 minutes. And all of these tools come from our industry, which I pride myself in because we're willing to make the investment in these platforms where a lot of people have platforms and won't make investments in them and won't get into names, but we're willing to invest in this industry because we love it and we see that there's still growth areas in it. Well, there's a ton in it, and you guys have made your your living in this industry forever. I think um, I think longer than us, aren't you? How how old are you guys now? Sixty? So, yeah, we just passed in twenty one. We were sixty, so we just passed the sixty years. Wow, so. uh, you know, big step up from fifty. So, um, and and pretty much your, your entire sixty years has been spent in this industry. So nobody, you know, arguably nobody knows more than you guys about this. And and the testing is the um, you know, with the OEMs with the manufacturers and and that obviously opened some doors for you. And we'll talk about in a minute, your trip to Japan. Uh, I do want to dig in a little more to this consulting and, and, you know, sounds like this program, you got a lot of input from dealers, big and small. Um, you know, how does this program work? What does it entail? And how do you work with dealers? You know, we got to break these guys out of thinking of you as just that spec check guide company. Yeah. So I think it's, we take, I guess the easiest way to look at it is what are you hitting your head against the wall with? Right, what's the issues? And we dig into it with the dealer, with the manufacturer of what's their biggest issues. And a lot getting voice of customers through different vertical markets is a way to look at things. What are the buying habits of those people? What do they look for, right? So I think to me, being an expert in a vertical market is the key to a sale. And the problem is we don't know the language or the buying habits a lot of times. So we dig into that and help people find those by talking and doing surveys of 50 people and finding out what's the buying habits of them, 20 people, whatever it is, but just helping the dealer and the manufacturer 
pinpoint and target what the key areas of interest of those vertical markets are. So then you help them understand more of the opportunities around it and you, you kind of aggregate, um, you know, by vertical, you know, how, how they can sell, how they can approach. But this, this, it's, it's built around all these dealers. Yeah. So I think what's so cool is that we just started the dealer councils last year. A lot of people asked in and it's a forum for them to freely speak without being, I don't know, in a specific manufacturer's arena, right? So it's independent from everybody. And I think the cool thing is the sharing of ideas and thoughts around everything, right? From AI to managed IT to production, there's security. So there's so many things that the dealers talk about and they freely share information. And that information helps us also form what's important to the dealers and what we should be doing advisory services on, talking about in consulting, like AI, right? We entered a partnership with Go West on AI, and that has become one of the biggest topics. But it's scary also, right? Because you get into AI and people talk, am I going to lose my job? And the last thing in this industry we need to do is lose people. It's hard enough getting people. So, but talking about the legalities of it, but also the huge, huge benefits of efficiencies and cost savings associated with AI. And security too, before we started recording, you had mentioned you had been doing a lot of work in security. Let's let's touch on that because that is as core to our guy as, as our viewers, I think, as it gets. Yeah. So I think every manufacturer, not every, most manufacturers have their R and D and want to make sure that it's good and quality, uh, test with it. But a majority of the manufacturers will send their machines over to us to have a security test or certification. Right. And we give them the certification that we went through testing to make sure the hacking and everything like that. Um, and on our website, we have a list. So we keep the public aware of what machines that we have tested. We get them, you know, on a pretty regular basis. And we have a sample of that right on our website under testing. So. You know, also cybersecurity is a big thing. And we entered into an agreement with ACS a cybersecurity only partnership. And we do a lot of consulting business with cybersecurity through that partner ACS. So that's got to be a growing, a hugely growing area for you guys. And then going forward, you know, how do you package that for the dealers to make that useful for them? The security findings, like what kind of reports are you coming out with? What are you, what are you seeing out there? So I think white papers, right? That information of what, IT people are concerned with. Here are my lists. This is the latest and greatest from security hardware to software. Also, my concerns. What's the issues? You know, the biggest threats, I guess you can look at it. So I think all of those areas are areas that that information I think is key when a dealer goes with their managed IT program to talk to clients. We even have managed IT tools and programs that we can help the dealers with. So I know a lot of people have their own programs, but we have tools that are just specific to cybersecurity. So not a total managed IT offering, but just pinpointed on cybersecurity because I really do think cybersecurity is the threat that's here now, has been here, and will be here. And I do think that it's on top of mind with everybody and the protection is important. And one last thing I'll throw in is cybersecurity insurance keeps rising. The right, It's insane. So making sure that your house is clean, only possible to lower your rates. And that might be an area for dealers to talk about their clients of cybersecurity insurance, how is it going? And we can help you make sure you're getting the best rate possible. Well, the cybersecurity thing is just going to keep increasing importance, right? And the ransomware, nobody wants to have their, their hardware be the on-ramp for a nefarious attack. Nobody, you know, 
you, you not only but about buttoning down your own house, as you mentioned, but a lot of the people that are going to be watching this, they're they're in managed services, right? And they're trying to they're trying to protect their customers. So those tools, I'm sure, are helpful. You know, at a whole nother level, if you're in managed services and trying to, you know, trying to make a living at it and not get sued, by the way, by your customer, you know, if there's some sort of breach, which probably won't be your fault, right? I mean, if you're in that right. game. But yeah. also, it's a, it's an interesting area you've just brought up because there was a lawsuit a couple of weeks ago from a provider. The client is suing the provider of the service. So yeah. I really do think from yeah, a uh, it's a lawyer too, by the way. It's a so yes. so that's like the that's just next level stuff, right? I mean, it's bad enough to try to service, but you know when you're dealing with a lawyer and something goes wrong, you know, I mean, you're up against it right there. I, I don't I don't know what the answer to that is. Maybe you just don't service lawyers, but but um we uh we did I did a, a podcast with jo, uh, Joe Brunsman a couple of days yeah. ago on that same topic, on that specific uh uh, ransomware situation. So um, before we finish talking about all the great things you do, I want to wind up with the one that really jumped out at me. Um, not from anything you said, honestly, but we were both at the same conference and we were watching Frank Kuko up there talking about, uh, from Impact Networking, talking about the success they're having with e-commerce. And they are a big company, right? But when he put that number up there, I think he said it was 150,000 a month that they're bringing in in, re in revenue monthly. And right. it made me think, okay, they're not Amazon, but they're figuring it out. They're making it work. And and it just made me think, you know, you guys are sort of that, that de facto company in this industry that everybody knows and that is also offering e-commerce consulting services, right? So- I thought this would be a great time to maybe talk about uh, how is Frank doing that, in your opinion, and an impact. And, you know, how do you guys help companies like Frank do that? Yeah, so I think the most important part of that is he has an unbelievable organization and a marketing engine behind it. And there's strategies. So we have customers from mega dealers to dealers who are a million dollars using our solution. And it's important to know we've been doing this now for over two years. This isn't something that we just got into because it's a hot craze, right? We put a lot of money into it. Um, we have our configurator tool, which people absolutely love so they can build the product, the clients love it, so they can sample product versus product. You can do service contracts, leasing with it, you can do anything that you want. And I think the most important part is it's a true e-commerce experience with pricing or a lot of dealers are doing requests for quotes. So they're using it as a sales enablement tool for leads, but you can set it up any way you want. So one of the things bad is it's not totally scalable for me because every one of these is customizable. But the key thing is, I've been in this industry for a long, long time, and not any dealer is the same as another. So if you're not going to customize it, one size does not fit all. So you can set it up any way that you want. So from a business perspective, I hate it because I can't scale it. From a personal perspective, I love it because it gives the person, the dealer, the owner, the feel that they want for their customers and their dealership and their culture. And I think all of those things come into play when you're talking about e-commerce. And I think Nirvana is to walk in in the morning and say, I have orders sitting here waiting for me. Yeah. That's what we all want, that's right? The dream. And that's what e-commerce gives. And you know, it's very funny. I talk to people all the time about this. Our industry is slow to react on things. There's leaders and then there's people who just want to see it be successful. And I understand it all. But the reality of it is you and I are consumers outside of the copier industry for it too. So we go and we have purchased through e-commerce and Amazon specifically probably for 15 or 20 years. So I say all the time, why are our clients any different from us? And the answer is they're not. But there hasn't been vehicles there for them to do comparisons, to look it up, to go on a website. 
And the other interesting tool, uh, statistic is that 80% of people will go to a website three to five times before they contact a salesperson. Well, I just, I saw another great statistic. Um, I think it was 79%. I just did this in a presentation I did recently. It's 79, if I'm remembering correctly, percent of uh, purchases within the next couple of years, I think by 2027 will be done online. Yeah. Right. And I'm not saying 79% of our industry's purchases, but you look at the way things are going. Every manufacturer in our industry, every one of them, guys, uh, all their A4 products are on there. I don't care if it's Xerox, Sharp, Konica, Minolta, every one of them from one way has another. So they all have, they're all dipping their toe. They're all trying it. Right. We saw yesterday or just the other day, Fuji, uh, Fujifilm released a, what I would call a very small A3 product. And I don't know that this is being developed as a, a way to get that on Amazon, but it sure seems a, a, a step closer to being able to package it because it's so much smaller than the traditional A3. Um, right. And and so this is going to be a full standing kind of MFP copier. And to me, I'm looking at that and I'm thinking like if they can put some customer change, in, you know, changeable parts in there, uh, drums the way they've done with with the A4 stuff, uh, then why not be able to put that online? So then you look back to Frank's model, and 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 Impact does not have an Amazon type e-commerce solution. It's not you know everything we have is up there. It's selective. It's things right. that they want to target, but they're but they're they're using it and they're you know, they're making money at it. And to me, it, it just shows that, look, you're not going to take on Amazon head to head. But to your point, wouldn't you like to come into the office, or, you know, every morning and maybe have an order or two that just got done overnight? And, you know, and, and as these bots, these AI bots get better um, and can really learn to speak in your voice and answer real questions, you know, you, you're you going to come in in the morning and have orders and they're going to be more and more if you start investing in this, I think now. I'm sure between what you're doing with AI and your investment in e-commerce, um, I got to think you're going down that path and, and trying to automate as much as this as you can. Yeah, so w the chat box, we're to we have a chat box now, right? We're talking about incorporating, not talking about, developing AI into the chat box as we speak, right? So that will be a part of what we do. And I just want to go back to what we were talking about for a second when you said Frank was doing selective pieces. My feeling is this. If a client is looking at an A4 product, A3 segment one, even an A3 segment two, those are great e-commerce pieces. If I'm uh, looking for a sales rep, I'm looking for probably solutions-based and segment three and higher is probably where that comes in. Now I have dealers though, that have their full product line on with full pricing, right? And I do think that that's where the industry will go. People are really nervous about that because is it gonna kill my margins, relationships, uh, sales people being angry at me. There's so many things. Okay, time out, time out. Don't put, you're not going to put your lowest price on the internet, right? You're going to put right, a starting right, price on the internet. We all just right. put that out there. Like every, every there's still going to be, we're going to start with margin and, and we can negotiate down just the way we always have. You go in, yes. and, right? Okay, okay. But I'm just talking to you about the fears that yeah, yeah. No, I get fears it. Though. that I've heard constantly throughout everybody. Yep. But if they only knew that, you know, we have dealers now from East Coast to West Coast, North and South, throughout the whole United States with e-commerce solutions, right? So this isn't, you know, I used to arm wrestle to get appointments. And now we have 15 developers on our IT with a wait of about three to four months to get a solution developed. Because so get in line, people. Platform. You heard it here. Three to four month waiting period, and it's it's only going to get better and better. Um, we are we are moving right along. So we had a good state of the union on on kind of what's happening. I think at key point right now, but I I don't want to let you go without talking soon about your trip to Japan. Yep. Right. Two a week and a half, and you visited yep. just about yep. everything. You, visited, you said you visited everybody. So you tell me what what did you learn? Who did you see? Yeah. So I think. For us, a majority of the manufacturers, right, all seen uh, the topic. This was the topics and it's all production, AI, security. And with production, it's very funny. DTF, direct to film and labels and packaging were two of the 
hottest topics when it came to in production. So textiles, right, is big. And a lot of the manufacturers are coming out with textile machines or labels and packaging machines. So I think that you're seeing a trend there in production. And it's very interesting. We bought a company called Carstead Partners that's a labels and packaging. Well, they were in the United States and we okay. did that about two years ago. But last year we bought PPP for that's, different performance and that was the Europe one. And that's with the production portal and the production training. And now we're seeing production training, not just in the manufacturers, but also dealers are asking us for us. So that's a whole nother area. But I think, so manufacturers are curious about AI, but very concerned. Right. I think with security, they want to make sure security is there, policies and procedures are there, legalities. So you got a lot going on there. E-commerce was a topic um, also that was discussed, as you can imagine. And also a couple of the manufacturers. So I talked about testing. So our testing has gone from A3 to A4 to wide format to software. But over the last year and a half, we've tested security cameras. 3D printers, which I know never caught on in our industry, but it's a huge market. And what has caught on in our industry has been robotics. So believe it or not, for the last, you know, like year, we've started testing robotics. And we've gotten a lot of expertise in testing robotics. And it's very funny. We just had a company from uh, Egypt call us to test robotic products. So we're getting our name out in the robotics market for testing. And even some of the manufacturers that I visited are having robotics types of products come out over the next year or two. That's very interesting. So there's a lot of different shifting, right? That's going on with the manufacturers because everybody talked plain and simple about how hard it is with the volumes going down and harder to make money. And I think everybody, just like dealers, are looking for other areas. That What's they that can next big happen. thing that I can move into exactly. that's close enough to what I'm doing now? Exactly. 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 And we're trying to move with, and I hate to keep going back to this, but it's basically dealer council input, manufacturer input is what's shaping the future of our industry. Because if you think about it, AI robotics, DTF, labels and packaging, e-commerce, or five items and security we've done, but five items that we were not involved with a year and a half, two years ago. And yeah. those are all the leading uh, you know, platforms and solutions that we have today. Well, and they, and they all build on, honestly, the, the message that we've had in this industry for 20 plus years, which is diversify that product line. They've been yeah. saying it, forever. They called it solutions a million years ago. Um, they, you know, we were seeing tons of stuff at all the dealer conferences. You know, I remember, I remember years ago, Sharp coming out with some, um, some really interesting stuff that never came to market, just, you know, coming out with, with, with products that, that you know, could a dealer sell this, right? Because, right. and all the manufacturers are trying to come up with those, you know, those next things that we can, we can keep supplying dealers with product Canon and, and Konica Minolta have um, security cameras and, you know, I mean, they all have uh, Rico and, and um, well, actually even you look at like Toshiba with the display business that they do, like they don't really make most of those displays, but, but they are in that business They're And some of their dealers are selling, you know, stadium displays, like full right. size. Right. And it's, it's, but it's, it's about, you know, these, these OEMs are finding products for their dealers to keep them, you know, to keep them uh, satisfying their customers. And, and as we move away from print, print's not typewriters, right? It's not just gonna drop off the planet and go away. It's it's a slow decline, but you know, we're going to the same meetings and you know, some dealers are losing money and not probably not doing real well. And they're the they're the ones getting acquired. But the big ones, man, every one of them seems like they're growing. Every meeting I went to, everybody's numbers were up, right? Yes. And we know what the industry is going down, they can't all be up, but the big guys are growing, they're acquiring. Their, their print volumes are going back up. Um, and it's, you know, maybe it's at the expense of some of these little guys, but there's a window here where you can use that to drive your 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 move into other other areas. You can use that money to invest in other areas. And you guys really seem like you're kind of helping the dealers quite a bit with, you know, 
putting, sh showing them what these other areas could be. Yeah. And I think part of it is an education, right? Of th this is all new to everybody, right? So everybody talks the words, but somebody show me how to do it. And I think that that's what we're trying to do is show them how to get into AI, how to get into labels and packaging, direct to film production, right? I think that's an important element. And the, you mentioned that e-commerce is probably the easiest way for them to do it and get, you know, the thing with e-commerce is this, it covers my whole territory. When I was a sales rep, if I didn't feel comfortable with an offering, I would never bring it up. So here's a way to get all my products up there, cover my whole territory, right? Represent who I am as a company, all in one offer, one platform. So it, it's important, right? And I think more and more dealers are seeing it. That's why we have the waiting list. That's why it's been so successful for us. And I, you know, it's nice to be on the side of helping and growing the business. So it's a win-win for both companies. Well, the, the key to all of this is you guys are a 60 year old, very trusted company in this industry. The OEMs trust you, the dealers trust you. You know, I don't really think I've heard other people ever say anything bad about you guys. You just, you're just always out there providing data, whether it's research or information or comparative reports, right? You're just here to help. And, and so, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of fun sitting back watching you guys move into these other areas um, and, and be successful at it. Right. But you're right. The dealers, you know, they could use some guidance. You're not, you, you know, you're, you're just trying to help them with the same message they're getting from their OEMs, but you're sort of that neutral company that they can turn to, you know, you work with all the OEMs, um, everyone, they're all your children, right? They're all equal. In, in your eye. And, and so, you know, to get some non-biased advice, um, whether it's on the consulting side, whether it's helping in e-commerce, uh, whether it's just putting awards in your sales reps hands, because they're going out to a deal and they can, you can show that, Hey, you know, I got, um, I'm Canon. I'm the most reliable product line of the year because, right. because these guys have, have been testing it. Right. I mean, you, you help dealers, um, probably in more ways than just about anyone I can think of. So, um, it, it's it's been really fun watching you guys grow and, and it seems like you're off to a really good start for for 2024 you were um man you had half the presentations at ecs i think i don't know if you got to enjoy that that conference so much but we, i sure did it was um you, you've been all over the place and, and and very busy so um yeah I, I appreciate you coming on today and talking about all this stuff yeah andy it's always a pleasure getting with you man and you get the message out. You're at every show humanly possible, right? <laughs> I think the biggest thing to me is we're starting to get a global presence, right? I think going to Asia, Europe, right? It's just by doing that acquisition, we get more and more presence. Yeah. And it's really cool to see it. I'm happy for the employees, right? It's really cool to see us being successful because a lot of 60-year-old companies can become stale, sit on their laurels, right? And just say, okay, I've been successful this way and turn your head. But I really do give it a lot of people credit for being open to get into new areas that they're not even familiar with. But it has really helped us grow the business, grow the company, and I think really help the dealers and the manufacturers. Well, honestly, you know, Anthony, I think you guys did get stale and you went through a period where you had a bunch of people running that company that um, let's just say they were outsiders. I don't think they ever really truly understood how this industry worked. You grew up in this industry. You mentioned you started selling copiers. I think it's it was Xerox. Um, so you you grew up in this and you get it. And so since you've been there, you know the changes, the additions that you've made, right, to this company that was I, I would just say spinning their wheels and kind of just existing, doing the same thing they'd always done: awards, testing, and and research, right. And since you've come in, you know, the e-commerce and now AI is a new direction and um, just all the, the dealer council you mentioned that just started last year, moving in these these areas that, you know, we're just sitting there uh, rather than just doing the same thing year in, year out that you did for 55 years. Um, really, I think it was it was good timing when you when you arrived and and it's, um you know, it's it's. You're a reinvigorated company. You're very different than you were just a few years ago. And 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 I hope people are starting to look at you guys a little differently now, too. It's, um, you know, those spec comparisons, um, I still think they're important. I know a lot of people don't want their reps, you know, sitting in front of a computer or going side by side. But man, like 
that gives that's what I used to do. And that, yeah. that gives you a lot of clout when you walk in. And I mean, that may still be important to that end user has to stand in front of a machine for, you know, an hour a day. Um, if I can tell them, you know, some specs are going to save me time and, you know, take steps out, blah, blah. But it all comes from your research. And that was all the old stuff. The new stuff is, is I think, what's going to bring you guys to the future, help bring these dealers into the future. Yeah, sure. automate what they do and and just take advantage of these technologies that are going to make their lives better and maybe more profitable. Don't you think? Yeah, I totally agree with everything you said. Right. But I don't do this alone. Right. There's oh, you have a great people. team. You do. Yeah. yeah a lot of people have been the there a long time. Yeah. A hundred people in the organization that carry their weight. Right. And I really, again, I'll just say it. The innovation of new things could not come without our employees all rowing together in the new direction, which is very difficult to do. Change is hard. And I give them a lot of credit for that. Well, with that, our 20 minute interview is now at, now at 30 minutes. I think that's a great, oh. great way to wind it up. Um, I love how you kind of finished that. I'll give you one last shout out to everybody. I, you know, for me, I just I appreciate you coming on here. I love catching up with what you guys are doing. I think you are just one of the you know, one of the most important partners for, for these dealers that, that they can find out there. It's just you guys, you know, you, you're not the same thing to, to two dealers. You, you you do stuff differently for everybody. Someone may use you for this. Someone may use you for that. Uh, someone may have you consulting. Um, but you guys are, you know, you're a core company in this industry. And I think I think most people watching this probably use you for one thing or another. So yeah. thank you. What um, last, last words, last uh, last messaging for everyone. Yeah, I listen, I just appreciate you having me on, right? It's a great vehicle to get our message out. I love just talking to you, right, and catching up. It sucks that this is 30 minutes. Nobody's going to listen for yeah. 30 minutes. <laughs> but the reality of it is I had a good time, and I really do appreciate you having me on. I appreciate it, too. Thank you for coming on. Honestly, the best part was, you know, the before we started recording, but we won't talk <laughs> about that. Um, good, good seeing you, Anthony. I'm sure I'll be seeing you very soon at one of the upcoming conferences and uh, say hi to everybody out over there at Keypoint. I definitely will. Thanks Thank so you. much, Andy. Thank you. Have a good one.